This lesson deals with Supplemental Problem 7.4. You can find this problem in the ECE 201 ebook in the Chapter 7 Supplemental Problem starting on page 9. Given this one inductor circuit with a single pole single throw switch, can you find the value of I1, I sub L, and V sub L of T for all T? In the Chapter 7 notes, we had an algorithm for solving one inductor circuits. The first step is to formulate the equations. Since we have a first order differential equation, the form of our solution for any voltage or any current is A plus B times E to the minus T over tau. Since we have three variables, let's use three subscripts. Our second step was to find the pre-switching conditions of our unknowns. And so let's find that. Let's assume that the circuit's been in, in this position for a long time with the switch closed. We've reached steady state for the inductor, so it looks like a short circuit. Now we're going to solve for the current I1, I sub L, and V sub L. With the inductor being a short circuit, the voltage is equal to zero. If I could find the voltage across the 6K and the 12K, then I could find these two currents. What I've got is a voltage divider. The 6K and 12K in parallel, voltage dividing with the 3K. So we take 6K in parallel with 12K over the same thing plus 3K times the 42 volts, get 24 volts. So there's 24 volts across the 6K and the 12K. So dividing 24 by 6K, I get 4 milliamps, 24 by 12K, I get 2 milliamps. The third step in our algorithm is to find the initial conditions. The current through an inductance cannot change instantaneously. It was 2 milliamps before we open the switch, and so it must still be 2 milliamps after we open the switch, just for a little bit of time. That's going to be equal to A2 plus B2 times E to the minus T over tau, but T is equal to zero. Now the current that's flowing in here is going to have to flow this way since there's an open circuit here. There's no current going here. So the current I1 at zero plus is the same as minus I sub L of zero plus, two milliamps, so it's a minus two milliamps. And that's equal to A1 plus B1 times E to the zero, so just A1 plus B1. We can find the voltage across the inductance, so just erase this. Since we have current flowing in this direction, we have this drop plus this drop. So the two milliamps that's flowing this way, multiply that by 6K and by 12K, and we'll get the voltage from here to here, we want the opposite sign. So it'll be the negative of that. So minus two milliamps times 18K minus 36 volts, and that's A3 plus B3 times E to the zero, or again, A3 plus B3. I have two unknowns, I need a second equation. So as time approaches infinity, or really five time constants, the inductance will become a short circuit again. Let's go around this loop and determine the voltages. So this current again is flowing in this direction. So I've got drop across here, plus the drop across here, so that'd be 6K times I sub L at infinity, plus 12K times I sub L at infinity, plus zero equals zero. I could put that on the other side of the equation. But since I have something times I sub L and something times I sub L, and that has to equal zero, then I sub L must be equal to zero. So that's gonna be equal to A2 plus B2 times E to the minus infinity over tau. That's just equal then to A2. Since I1 is a negative of I sub L, then that's also zero, and that's gonna be equal to A1 plus B1 times E to the minus infinity. So we have the value then of A1 and A2. With the inductor being a short again, then the value of the voltage as T approaches infinity is equal to A3 plus B3 times E to the minus infinity over tau, and that should be equal to A3. So that I can solve for my constants A and B. Five of our algorithm is to find the Thevenin resistance looking back from the inductance with all the independent sources set equal to zero and the switch is in the position for t greater than zero. What you see looking back here is the 12k in series with the 6k. So my time constant is L over R Thevenin. So I have two millihenries divided by 18k is 111 nanoseconds. I can put together the solution of my three variables. A1 plus B1 was minus two milliamps. A1 was zero, so B1 is minus two milliamps. So, so I1 is equal to minus two milli e to the minus t over tau. This is, great. this is true for t greater than zero. For t less than zero, we found that it was equal to four milliamps, and there's a discontinuity here. So that current did change instantaneously. Current in the inductor, A plus B was equal to two milli, but A2 was equal to zero, so B2 is equal to two milli. I sub L is equal to two milli e to the minus t over tau, for t greater than zero. But when t is equal to zero, this is equal to two milliamps. And we also found that the current in the inductance was two milliamps for T less than equal to zero. So we have a continuity there. The voltage across the inductance, A plus B was equal to minus 36. A was equal to zero, so B is equal to minus 36. 
So the voltage across the inductance is minus 36, e to the minus t over tau, for t greater than zero. But for t less than zero, we found that the voltage was zero. It was a short circuit in steady state. So we have a discontinuity here. We're going to jump from zero to minus 36. Okay, let's sketch these. The first one here, we have four milliamps. And then we're going to jump to minus two. And then in five time constants, we're going to go back to zero. We'll discharge this. So 5 times 111 nanoseconds is 555 nanoseconds, or 0.55 microseconds. Just draw a little bit of an exponential looking picture here. For the current in the inductance, we had 2 milliamps for t less than 0. And then we exponentially decay to 0 in 5 time constants. And likewise, here we start out at 0, we jump to minus 36, and we come back up to 0 in 5 time constants. And this is supplemental problem 7.4.